Peace and blessings. Thank you for joining Tribe Bukurim on this daily prayer and Bible reading journey. We will read through the Bible using the one-year Bible reading plan and end in prayer. Today is May 19th, and we will be reading from 1 Samuel chapter 24 verses 1 through 22 and chapter 25 verses 1 through 44, John chapter 10 verses 22 through 42, Psalm chapter 116 verses 1 through 19, and Proverbs chapter 15 verses 20 through 21. Let's begin. 1 Samuel chapter 24 verses 1 through 22. David spares Saul. It happened, when Saul was returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men out of all Israel, and went to seek David and his men on the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens by the way, where there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were abiding in the innermost parts of the cave. The men of David said to him, Behold, the day of which Yahweh said to you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as it shall seem good to you. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe secretly. It happened afterward that David's heart struck him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. He said to his men, Yahweh forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, Yahweh's anointed, to put forth my hand against him, since he is Yahweh's anointed. So David checked his men with these words, and didn't allow them to rise against Saul. Saul rose up out of the cave, and went on his way. David also arose afterward, and went out of the cave, and cried after Saul, saying, My Lord the King! When Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the earth, and did obeisance. David said to Saul, Why do you listen to men's words, saying, Behold, David seeks your hurt? Behold, this day your eyes have seen how that Yahweh had delivered you today into my hand in the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is Yahweh's anointed. Moreover, my father, behold, yes, See the skirt of your robe in my hand? For in that I cut off the skirt of your robe and didn't kill you. Know and see that there is neither evil nor disobedience in my hand. And I have not sinned against you, though you hunt for my life to take it. May Yahweh judge between me and you, and may Yahweh avenge me of you. But my hand shall not be on you. As the proverb of the ancients says, Out of the wicked comes forth wickedness. But my hand shall not be on you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A flea? May Yahweh therefore be judge, and give sentence between me and you, and see, and plead my cause, and deliver me out of your hand. David's Oath to Saul It came to pass, when David had made an end of speaking these words to Saul, that Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have done good to me, whereas I have done evil to you. You have declared this day how you have dealt well with me, because when Yahweh had delivered me up into your hand, you didn't kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him go away unharmed? Therefore, May Yahweh reward you good for that which you have done to me this day. Now, behold, I know that you shall surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Swear now therefore to me by Yahweh that you will not cut off my seed after me, and that you will not destroy my name out of my father's house. David swore to Saul. Saul went home. But David and his men went up to the stronghold. 1 Samuel chapter 25 verses 1 through 44 The Death of Samuel Samuel died, and all Israel gathered themselves together and lamented him, and buried him in his house at Ramah. David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. David and Nabal 
there was a man in Mayan whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great, and he had three thousand sheep and a thousand goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail. And the woman was of good understanding and of a beautiful face. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep. David sent ten young men, and David said to the young men, Go up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. You shall tell him, Long life to you, peace be to you, and peace be to your house, and peace be to all that you have. Now I have heard that you have shearers. Your shepherds have now been with us, and we did them no hurt, neither was there anything missing to them, all the while they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and they will tell you. Therefore let the young men find favor in your eyes, for we come in a good day. Please give whatever comes to your hand to your servants and to your son David. When David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David, and ceased. Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants who break away from their masters these days. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my shearers and give it to men who I don't know where they come from? So David's young men turned on their way and went back and came and told him according to all these words. David said to his men, Every man put on his sword. Every man put on his sword. David also put on his sword. About four hundred men followed David, and two hundred stayed by the baggage. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to greet our master, and he railed at them. But the men were very good to us, and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything, as long as we went with them when we were in the fields. They were a wall to us, both by night and by day. All the while we were with them, keeping the sheep. Now therefore, know and consider what you will do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his house, for he is such a worthless fellow that one can't speak to him. Abigail intercedes for Nabal. Then Abigail hurried and took two hundred loaves of bread, two bottles of wine, five sheep ready dressed, five measures of parched grain, one hundred clusters of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and laid them on donkeys. She said to her young men, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she didn't tell her husband, Nabal. It was so, as she rode on her donkey, and came down by the covert of the mountain, that, behold, David and his men came down toward her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertained to him. He has returned me evil for good. God do so to the enemies of David, and more also, if I leave of all that belongs to him by the morning light, so much as one who urinates on a wall. When Abigail saw David, she hurried and alighted from her donkey, and fell before David on her face, and bowed herself to the ground. She fell at his feet, and said, On me, my lord, on me be the iniquity, and please let your handmaid speak in your ears. Hear the words of your handmaid. Please don't let my lord regard this worthless fellow, even Nabal. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your handmaid, didn't see the young men of my lord whom you sent. Now therefore, my lord, as Yahweh lives and as your soul lives, since Yahweh has withheld you from blood guiltiness and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now therefore let your enemies and those who seek evil to my lord be as Nabal. Now this present which your servant has brought to my Lord, let it be given to the young men who follow my Lord. Please forgive the trespass of your handmaid, for Yahweh will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fights the battles of Yahweh, and evil shall not be found in you all your days. Though men may rise up to pursue you and to seek your soul, yet the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with Yahweh your God. He will sling out the souls of your enemies as from the hollow of a sling. It shall come to pass, when Yahweh has done to my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you, and shall have appointed you prince over Israel, that this shall be no grief to you, nor offense of heart to my Lord, either that you have shed blood without cause, 
or that my Lord has avenged himself. When Yahweh has dealt well with my Lord, then remember your handmaid. David said to Abigail, Blessed is Yahweh, the God of Israel, who sent you this day to meet me. Blessed is your discretion, and blessed are you that have kept me this day from blood guiltiness and from avenging myself with my own hand. For indeed, as Yahweh, the God of Israel, lives, who has withheld me from hurting you, unless you had hurried and come to meet me, surely there wouldn't have been left to Nabal by the morning light so much as one who urinates on a wall. So David received of her hand that which he had brought him, and he said to her, Go up in peace to your house. Behold, I have listened to your voice and have granted your request. Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Therefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. It happened in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, that his wife told him these things, and his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. It happened about ten days after that Yahweh struck Nabal, so that he died. David marries Abigail. When David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed is Yahweh, who has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and has kept back his servant from evil. Yahweh has returned the evil doing of Nabal on his own head. David sent and spoke concerning Abigail to take her to him as wife. When the servants of David had come to Abigail to Carmel, they spoke to her, saying, David has sent us to you to take you to him as wife. She arose and bowed herself with her face to the earth and said, Behold, your handmaid is a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. Abigail hurried and arose and rode on a donkey with five ladies of hers who followed her. And she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. David also took Ahinoam of Jezreel, and they both became his wives. Now Saul had given Michael, his daughter, David's wife, to Paltai, the son of Laish, who was of Galim. John chapter 10 verses 22 through 42 It was the feast of the dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in Solomon's porch. The Jews, therefore, came around him and said to him, How long will you hold us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you don't believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, these testify about me. But you don't believe, because you are not of my sheep, as I told you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give eternal life to them. They will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Therefore Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, We don't stone you for a good work, but for blasphemy because you, being a man, make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Isn't it written in your law, I said you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture can't be broken, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you blaspheme, because I said I am the Son of God? If I don't do the works of my Father, don't believe me. But if I do them, Though you don't believe me, believe the works, that you may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in the Father. They sought again to seize him, and he went out of their hand. He went away again beyond the Jordan into the place where John was baptizing at first, and he stayed there. Many came to him. They said, John indeed did no sign, but everything that John said about this man is true. Many believed in him there. Psalm chapter 116 verses 1 through 19. I love Yahweh because he listens to my voice and my cries for mercy. Because he has turned his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death surrounded me, 
the pains of Sheol got a hold of me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called on Yahweh's name. Yahweh, I beg you, deliver my soul. Yahweh is gracious and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. Yahweh preserves the simple. I was brought low, and he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for Yahweh has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before Yahweh in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I said, I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, All people are liars. What will I give to Yahweh for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call on Yahweh's name. I will pay my vows to Yahweh, yes, in the presence of all his people. Precious in Yahweh's sight is the death of his saints. Yahweh, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your servant girl. You have freed me from my chains. I will offer to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on Yahweh's name. I will pay my vows to Yahweh, yes, in the presence of all his people, in the courts of Yahweh's house, in the middle of you, Jerusalem. Praise Yah. Proverbs chapter 15 verses 20 through 21. A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish man despises his mother. Folly is joy to one who is void of wisdom but a man of understanding keeps his way straight. Lord, we thank you for being in our midst. We thank you for the gift of salvation and that you rejoice over us. We thank you for calling us into covenant relationship with you for having a purpose and plan for us and for being a promise keeping God. You are a constant provider and you cannot fail. Your name is great and we praise you for who you are. We recognize you in your power and ask your forgiveness for anything we have said, done, or thought that was unpleasing to you. Create in us clean hearts and renew right spirits within us. Bless us with knowledge, wisdom, understanding, maturity, discernment, and focused minds. Take away any thoughts or feelings that are not in alignment with you. Open our eyes to the wonderful things of your law and make it an engrafted word in us. May we live lives according to your will, denounce our sinful nature, Lay our sins at your feet and walk in obedience to you for your glory. Lord, our desire is to be all that you have called us to be. As we grow in you, may we forget the things that do not bring you glory and reach forward to the things that you have planned for us. Things that will bring peace to ourselves and others. Things that will bring us into maturity, pure forgiveness, and generous giving. May we stay focused on you being of mature minds and walk in your ways, recognizing your voice and always acknowledging you as our God and King. We present our bodies as living sacrifices to you and ask that you make us aware of your presence and what you are doing in the earth today. Cover us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Keep our physical bodies, our nation, homes, modes of transportation, places of employment, bank accounts, credit and investments and communities safe from all hurt, harm and danger. Expose and obliterate anything that dares to come against your people. Bring complete and total healing to our minds, emotions, and bodies. May your perfect will be done in the earth. We pray this prayer over ourselves and everyone connected to us in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. May the shalom peace of God follow you for the rest of your days.